Hey. Uh, <laughs> microphone. Um, so, uh, like Colin said, um, I've been working with Memo uh, on developing open frameworks for the iPhone. That's a creative platform for artists and people who aren't really great at coding to be able to do stuff on the iPhone. Um, I've been working with it for a little over a year. I'm not generally a mobile artist person, but um, the iPhone has been really exciting, so I've been doing a lot with that uh, lately. So I'm going to show a couple projects from that that I made in Open Um So the first one that I'm going to show is an app that I came out with. Uh, probably a little over a year ago called SynthPond, which um, which is an interactive uh, audio toy, sort of. It, um, the idea was that I'm not really very good at music and I don't understand um, notes and measures and that kind of way of creating music, but I wanted to be able to um, have fun and play with music, sort of in like a, it was very inspired by Toshio Owai, if any of you are familiar with him, he made Electroplankton um, for the DS, so I wanted a way that as a visual person I could interact with sound. Um, so I made this app, oh perfect, that um, basically it's, it's this pond um, of, whoa. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, perfect. Um, you tap, and it puts these nodes down, and the nodes create audio based on what color they are. So if you hold down, um, you can pick a new color, and it changes the note. Oh. And there are two different kinds of notes. There are these circular notes, and then there are uh, square-type notes which react when they get hit. So you can create these systems, and then when you move them around, it changes the beat and the, of the system. And you can start to do much more complicated things, um, because the systems are also totally spatial. So you can change the mode so that you're the listener, and as you move, it changes the notes. So um, I'm going to show a couple videos on the computer of the types of things that people have made with it. It's a pretty versatile um, application because it also can control um, other synthesizers or really anything through uh, OSC, which is an open wireless protocol. Um, so this is a video that someone made of SynthPond uh, controlling Max MSB, I think, or potentially Ableton. I don't really know my audio programs. I think it's Ableton. Um, but um, through pure data. So the sounds are coming from the computer and the iPhone is just sending um, signals to tell it when to trigger them and how loud to trigger them and stuff like that. 
Um, and it's actually, my mistake, this is actually going through a real synthesizer. It's going from the phone to pure data and then to an, an actual synthesizer. So it's controlling hardware. Um, so the next project that I'm going to show is uh, a quick game. Oh, God. Uh, I don't have spaces. Um, the next project that I'm going to show is a quick game that I was making to tr try and explore um, multi-touch and what you could do with multi-touch. So this just came out um, also recently. Um, and it's, it's a crazy system. Uh, um, it's a game called, <laughs> it's okay. Um, called Unify. So it's a block dropping game and I was trying to explore what you could do with multi-touch that you couldn't do with traditional control schemes because a lot of the games on the App Store um, and that people are trying to make are trying to emulate traditional control schemes. Um, but I wanted to do something that you couldn't do on another platform. Um, so I took this concept of trying to manipulate two things at the same time, which is something that most people are not familiar with. Um, and made a block dropping game where you have to manipulate two sides at once and really multitask um, and try to get controls that were um, very natural feeling. And so the, the game kind of evolves um, and gets more complicated and the colors evolve. Um, I don't know, it's not a particularly artsy project, but. Um, it was an interesting exploration for me to just explore what you could do with uh, multi-touch. And then the last thing that I'm going to show is actually a video that probably won't um, make a lot of sense because it uses 3D audio and you really need to be wearing headphones. Uh, but as a project I think it was really interesting and to me it, it was one of the more interesting types of things that you can do um, with an iPhone which is you can really manipulate the environment around you in a way where, um, like RJ DJ did, um, you're not, you don't, there's no screen, you're just in an environment and what you're doing um, is, is uh, creating audio. So, I'll just let the video. Okay, so um, I just want to show this experimental audio game that I'm working on with the iPhone uh, 3GS, the new one, uh, that uses the company and 3D audio. So the way it works is that you have this sort of, uh, I can get it to focus on an um, iPhone. There you go. Um, these sounds that come in, and when you turn it around, it changes the position of the sound. The sound is the, the yellow orb, and they get close to you. And the idea is that you want to orient yourself towards the sound. So that one, when it made the boom sound, it mean, meant I got it, but if I failed, it would be like that. Wow, that's really loud. Um, so the trick with the game is just sort of it positions the audio based on where you're, where you're uh, pointing. But the trick is, the way that you actually play it is you don't look at the screen. You just put it in your pocket, and you kind of close your eyes, and then you rotate your body to where you think the sound is. So if you were wearing headphones, this would be really cool. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but I guess that's pretty much it for, um, the things that I wanted to talk about. But I, I think that there's a lot that, that could be done with that kind of exploration on the iPhone. And then sort of lastly, a topic that has come up in the last couple of days that I think could really um, happen on the iPhone for art that would get me really excited is um, that the iPhone is something that we have with us all the time. And we always look to it for attention um, if, if we have one or an iPod Touch. And that, as artists, gives us the opportunity to, to insert stuff into people's lives and try and insert art into people's lives in a way that we never could do before. Um, it was always a, 
a really serious act if someone wanted to find art, they'd go out and find it. Um, I mean, graffiti and public art, you can kind of do this thing, but with iPhones, it's a really personal experience um, when we're using it. And so that gives us the opportunity to try and make small um, experiences where we can do critical art or critical design projects and affect small personal parts of people's lives as opposed to trying to make big commentaries. So um, I think that is exciting and I'm not sure why that hasn't happened a lot on the App Store already, but I think in the future that sort of thing will start to happen a lot. So thanks and thanks Colin for inviting me.